The next type of arthritis that we see, which is similar to the gout, is psoriatic arthritis. And psoriatic arthritis will commonly affect these joints in this area and then down the finger, but will actually kind of skip joints. Unlike the sausage digit appearance, the psoriatic arthritis oftentimes will skip the joint, but also is very, very destructive to the joint itself. When you see psoriatic arthritis, you'll see this, this joint will actually take on a mottled appearance. It will be very, very eroded and have this type of appearance to it on the x-ray. The x-ray almost blows right through. Okay? Psoriatic arthritis, they found in the research, if you have psoriasis around your navel, the likelihood of you having psoriatic arthritis increases exponentially. Okay? Most people, again, most people who have are any type of psoriasis around their navel will actually have a likely predilection for psoriatic arthritis as well. Are you familiar with psoriasis? Psoriasis usually occurs on people's elbows. You'll see these white and grayish scaly patches. It's very common on the knees, very common on the scalp. You'll see it's, it looks like kind of a dandruffy appearance. It can often be very itchy on the scalp, but it'll have a, a red margin to it, and then in the center will be this gray or scale patch. Okay, You'll see it in little patches on the elbows and the forearm here, elbows and forearm, and then very commonly on the head around above the ears and the back of the scalp, and then very commonly on the knees and on the shin. I've only seen a couple of cases uh, where people have had psoriasis around the navel, and in those cases, they've always had psoriatic arthritis. Okay. And how that's. Does, how does that arthritis present itself? Again, it will be very inflammatory, okay? And it will skip the joint. It won't be necessarily the whole finger like you'll see with the gout, okay? Gout, again, is classic for gout, is your old German sausage digit. And that's what they call it, sausage digits. Okay? Because they'll just, it'll lose those knuckle anatomy appearances because it'll just, just become round and just look like somebody slipped a sausage right over the finger. Okay? And it's very painful. They'll be so stiff. Okay? Very difficult to move the fingers. Very, very, very painful. Clear on that so far? Yes? Okay. Now, you can see then in each of these cases that there's something specific that's amiss in the system. Okay? Rheumatoid arthritis, RA, is an autoimmunity. The body is attacking itself. Okay? As is the association with psoriasis. Psoriasis is a skin affliction where the immune system, the T cells, are confused and they begin to accumulate and start to release different chemical markers and attack the skin and create then that scaly appearance. Okay? Gout can oftentimes be then associated with what we described as the accumulation of uric acid Whereas osteoarthritis is more often than the degenerative change. I just overuse. I hit my fingers against that shovel so many times, or I've been operating that saw or whatever for so long. Text messaging is going to become the next osteoarthritis former of this joint right here in the thumb. Okay? Because the thumb isn't accustomed to doing that type of minute movement repetitively. So yes, text messaging, okay? And unfortunately, it, it's affecting the joint that usually is associated with rheumatoid arthritis, but is becoming more commonly associated now with osteoarthritis as a degenerative change, okay? So be aware of that, uh, especially for the, the younger kids. The interesting thing is that type of pull into the finger and that pull this way of the hand pulls that thumb into that joint and that tightness actually is associated then with inflammation in what's called the flexor, 
pallidus longus muscle here, okay? Flexor hallucis or pollicis, let's see. It's a pelican, so it's pollicis. It looks like a feather. So the flexor pollicis muscle here, and then the flexor group on the inside of the elbow and the extensor group on the back of the elbow. If you can actually release those muscles, usually you can relieve some of that pain because those muscles get pulled or start to draw that thumb in so strongly on the flexor side that it actually creates that joint pushing into itself. Okay. So, any questions there on the differentiation of those types of arthrotides? Okay. In the spine, the most common presentation of arthritis, again, is osteoarthritis. I was in a traumatic accident. I fell out of the swing set as a child. I fell out of the tree. Uh, I wrecked on my bicycle. I was in a wrestling trauma. I was cheering, and I was thrown up in the air, and no one caught me. All of those create for us osteoarthritis. Um, when I was mountain biking, I broke my arm. Um, when I was riding a four-wheeler with my cousin, we went flying off this jump and broke my wrist. That's where we'll find osteoarthritis. Okay, so those are very common causes then of osteoarthritis. Again, is the trauma, impact traumas. Okay? Did I actually see a scar? Did you? Did that I did. <laughs> yeah. So when we look at the, the spine then, osteoarthritis, especially in the lower back, the thinning of the disc, degenerative disc disease, degenerative joint disease in the lower lumbar spine, that's very commonly differentiated as a weight-bearing pain alleviated by resting or lying down or sitting, okay? Whereas a disc pain will be differentiated as worse with sitting and then the transition from sitting to standing is going to be a sacroiliac joint pain. Okay? Well, that's arthritis in the spine. The next common arthritis of the spine is the rheumatoid arthritis, where you actually have this synovial joint attack occurring high in the neck. And what you'll see is on the flexion x-ray, as the head tips forward, um, I'm going to erase this. Is that everybody okay with that on the anatomy? Good art. Okay, let's go to... In the neck, the neck x-ray will actually show us where there's instability because the ligaments associated with the, the joints, particularly the around then, let's do it this way. We need another volunteer up here, right? So we'll get this guy here. And what we'll see is that as this person actually flexes the neck forward, you'll see where on this lateral x-ray, where this occiput comes down, it rests on the first vertebrae of the neck called the atlas. And then the second vertebrae of the neck actually has this little tooth-like process. And it comes up underneath this ring and then has this type of an anatomical shape. Well, this ring, the atlas, moves around this, but if you're actually to turn this downward like this, it kind of has this shape, okay? And then when we look at this, where this little tooth-like process comes upward, there's a ligament that goes behind it and catches on that tooth-like process. So again, this is what we have, is this ring around this tooth-like process and that allows then the head and neck to be able to move forward and back without then the atlas guillotining the brain stem as it comes down through here. Okay? What will happen in rheumatoid arthritis, advanced rheumatoid, is that this ligament will actually be eroded away. And so when this head tips into flexion, you'll actually see that this gap, as this person goes into flexion, this gap now will actually increase. It'll go from just this narrow gap like this to where then there's this clunky almost sensation. Okay? So they'll tip their head forward and they'll feel that little kind of a shift or a give. And what they'll oftentimes feel then is pinging because the posterior portion of the spinal cord going up into the cerebellum brainstem is all sensory. So they'll feel a stinging into their periphery. They'll feel it in their hands or in their feet like a shock. They tip their head into flexion when that actually degenerates. Okay? 
So for the chiropractor, I've never actually seen this. I've seen it just only in, in studies. Um, I haven't seen it on any of my patients. But for the chiropractor that's doing traditional adjustments or manipulations, the caution always is if you adjust this quickly or in flexion, you may have then instability here because the spinal cord is resting right here. Okay, and This spinal cord in here, this little butterfly in here of all the spinal nerves that are coming back and forth, all the tracks are going up and down, can potentially create some instability and weakness there. Okay, so that's what we look for in the rheumatoid case. Kind of fascinating.